Fantastic. Hello, my name is Chris Roberts. Welcome to The Long Road. I'm here with Bob and Liz at the Y Construction site. We're going to do this a little bit different. This is our third visit out here. And so what we're going to do, we're going to update today's, and then this show will show you how we've done the construction progression. I think we were here in November, in March, and now we're here at the end of April. And I think you're going to see some quite, quite improvements. And I think you're going to realize this project is much bigger than we originally thought. I'm here with Bob Oberlander. And we're now at the YMCA construction site. Yeah, we're uh, a couple of days before Thanksgiving, and uh, as you can see shortly, uh, we've made a lot of progress. Um, and from what you see behind us, you got the uh, the South Shore gunite here. They're pouring actually the the actual gunite for the swimming pools. Uh, they're working on the therapy pool right now, and uh, the uh, the big pool is pretty much poured. It's uh, it's been braced for uh, before they backfill it, and. Uh, uh, there's a lot to report. Well, in a little while we'll get some hot hats and we'll get much closer to the pool. But, you know, you had some really bad weather over the last couple of weeks. Has that slowed it down or are you still feeling good? We're still feeling good. There were a couple of bad rainy days where they, they couldn't work, but they're making up time that they've lost. Uh, they've been going late. They've been working on Saturdays. They're going to start some Sundays soon. So um, uh, things are progressing very well. They're actually ahead on the site work. Um, that got completed about four weeks earlier than, than we thought, and there's just very little left to do, as we'll, we'll show you with the, uh, with the camera shortly, that uh, the parking lot's done, the uh, light bases are in, we're about to pour sidewalks, um, and foundation-wise, uh, uh, things are moving along down on the child care wing and should start shortly here right at the pool wing, and eventually the two foundations will meet. Uh, in the middle in, in gymnasium area. So. And you were told before that the child care is really critical because you want the child care to be open at the start of school. That's correct. In August of 2011 we want child care open to be ready. So we're, uh, we're excited that things are moving forward. We actually have a date that steel is going to be arriving on site right after the first of the year. Um, there were a couple of design issues that we ran into with the metal building but those have been resolved and uh, everyone has worked hard, McMillan and uh, all the different subs, the steel people are all still in tune with trying to get this building open on time, so we're, we're excited about that. I notice you, you've got all your roads poured, like mm -hmm. you're talking about getting ready for the sidewalk. You kind of get it really close because this is about the week the asphalt usually shuts down in New Hampshire, so you've got all your asphalt work done. Yeah, the sub base is in for, yeah. the, for the parking lot. It's going to stay that way until next summer. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him here next week uh, pouring concrete for the sidewalks that are over there. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's been warm now, so, so we're good. Okay, here comes our hot hat, so we'll be able to stop moving around. Thank you. this ramp for? What is this pool for? This is the warm water therapy pool and the ramp is uh, so we have handicap access into the pool directly that someone can either uh, go down in a walker or actually be rolled right into the pool in a wheelchair and uh, we have a, uh, a lower depth pool than the, the regular pool. It's only about between two and, and five feet deep. Um, it's meant for, um, you wonder why it's so deep at one end. It's, uh, a lot of shoulder therapy needs to be done in a standing position and people are getting taller and taller. So it's, uh, it's not like a, a traditional kid's pool that you would think about. So. So, so if someone's been in a car accident and they have lower back problems or leg problems, they'll do the therapy in this pool to help it out. That's correct. There'll be classes, there'll be people who are, who are just uh, um, unable to do regular exercise classes uh, that can get into this pool uh, much more um, easily than a regular pool, which is still handicapped yeah. accessible. Um, we have a, a, a lift that could get a, uh, a wheelchair. It's actually a, an aquatic oh. wheelchair in, into the regular pool as well. So that's, uh, they're both accessible. So again, this is your interaction with the Cheshire Medical Center and your involvement in 2020 vision. 
It's just a, a good thing for anyone of any ability to be able to get into a swimming pool. <clears throat> and we're talking about the pool over here. It looks like they just about got finished, the inside finished. Yeah, the gun night's complete. They're uh, bracing the side, and uh, uh, we're excited that uh, um, pretty soon the foundations will start around the outside of this. So uh, this had to be done first before it was closed oh. in um, to this heavy equipment that you see over uh, uh, t to our right there. So. so you'll be able to get all this closed in before the harshness of winter and get it all fixed, ready to go for next year? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, you know, there's steel coming in, as I said, January 3rd. Those foundations have to be ready to accept that steel. So they're, um, they're making a lot of progress. You'll see when we go down to child care there how far they've come on that. And uh, that's the harder part of the, the building is what we started first. So it, uh, it was nice to get the, the more challenging parts uh, out of the way. So. Okay, since you're talking about the child care, why don't we just go down to the child care section? Okay. So we're at the far end of the building. This is going to be your new child care center? Yes, Chris. We uh, uh, have the footings in and uh, the, uh, the walls, and they've already started to backfill. You, you can see over there. And uh, this was the harder part of the foundation. You can see there are a lot of twists and turns, and uh, um, there's some column lines that run through at various places here. So the, this uh, took a little bit longer to get going than we, we wanted to, but a couple of design issues had to be sorted out uh, between how the steel frame relates to the foundation, but we got past that and they're all submittals for everything from the, uh, the anchor bolts and the soil has to be tested and there's a pretty um, vigorous inspection process uh, along the way. So we're, um, you know, there haven't been any red flags and uh, fortunately the weather's been pretty cooperative and uh, they're actually uh, making good progress catching up right now for a long time. When you, you walk around, you get all these people going through blueprints after blueprint after blueprint. It's never 100% transferred from a blueprint to reality. There's always these little glitches, as you said. There are always questions. There are always uh, revisions, and uh, um, but there are always final drawings that are going to have everything on it. So it, 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 you know, we've got a lot of different people looking at this, uh, all wanting it to be correct, and um, every little detail is looked at. It's uh, and it's going to be such a big building, a complicated building, you want to ensure if I have a doubt, let's stop, let's, let's ask questions instead of doing something stupid that'll make a delay. Yeah, no one wants to be redoing a portion of a building. It's, uh, um, and and there, there's a whole process uh, uh, down the chain of command between the architect reviewing all the submittals that have come from McMillan and uh, coordinating between the engineer the foundation engineer and the metal building engineer and it, it's it's a great process to actually be part of and watch because it's uh, um, we got quite a team working on this and everyone uh, is doing a top-notch job making sure we get to where we are right now and beyond that. Notice the insulation you're doing a seal waterproof seal on the outside and in insulating the inside we were talking before is trying to make it as en energy efficient as possible yeah, the, you know, even though the ground's only uh, 50 degrees, it still helps to, um, you know, retain as much of the heat as you can inside the building. And, uh, you know, it's part of the energy code we're building this to, and uh, um, it, it's uh, well worth it in the long run. Because I think a lot of people, we we're talking at the city council about, well, let's make an energy efficient building, but other people are saying, well, it only adds 4% more on the construction. And they say, why did I spend it? But over the life of the building, that energy savings can be quite tremendous. It's a tough uh, uh, balancing act because we have a building that we have to ensure that we get all our programming into. And there is a payback on energy efficiency, but you have to juggle uh, the time of that payback and being able to have everything you want in the building. We Unfortunately, we don't have unlimited funds, and uh, you know there are a lot of things that could be on our wish list that we don't have right now but there's always the future and you know maybe think solar can be added in the future in terms of field panels if you know as we uh, go on in the years and see what happens with our energy situation as a whole well the lincoln field in philadelphia they're going green next year they're adding like 25 25,000 solar panels and wind turbines and so yeah you always have the ability to go forward and and improve it's a great thing yep so, like you were talking about before, 
you've got this end and you get those ends. Those are the two critical ones, more demanding. And then your goal is to, during, over the course of the winter, connect them with the regular, the, the main building. Yeah, well, you'll see uh, the foundation is actually, the, the simplest part of the foundation is in the middle in the gymnasium that they haven't started yet. So, um, you know, shortly they're going to be doing the foundation around the gunite that we saw just previously. And then they will meet um, shortly after that. So I would say by the middle of January, you'll see completed foundations for this entire building and, uh, and with steel going up at the same time. So. The, um, you used the word gun out a couple of times. Could you explain to the viewers what, what that is? What the gunite is? Yeah. It, it's, it, as far as my knowledge, and uh, I might not be complete 100% uh, correct, it's this, a special formulation of concrete that they use for the pool. No, I'm, I can't tell <laughs> yeah. you what the, the, the aggregate difference yeah. is between regular concrete and, and gunite, but there's something different in the mix. Um, other than that, I'd be... Uh, well, that's good enough because mm -hmm. sometimes we go and we talk about specifics mm -hmm. and people go, what is that word, what, is that, what does mm -hmm. that mean? And there, so <clears throat> you've got this done, you're going to have, they're, they're going to be pouring columns in there. How high are those columns going to be? They're well, they're, be the, they're the base. They, don't, they won't come up much higher. They're, that's what the steel, um, where the steel is going to sit on and be bolted to. And they actually have a couple of column lines that they, they've started already. It looks like they're getting ready to pour. You can see actually see one, one the, in the center with the bolts. That's a column line right there, uh, with the anchor bolt sticking up. And there's going to be a major column line that's going to be off to my right here. This is kind of the separation between the childcare phase and the uh, next phase, which is the childcare lobby and, and the gym. So. We're out here at the new YMCA. I'm here with Liz and Bob. Thank you. Um, yes. Let's see. Last time we were here, it's probably around the Thanksgiving time. But we've had a really nasty um, winter. But we can see we've had some major construction going on. Can you explain what, what's happening? Sure, Chris. Um, lots has happened since uh, Thanksgiving and December when we had actually pretty good building weather. And we took advantage of that and completed all the foundation work uh, prior to the steel coming that you can see in, in the background there. Um, the, uh, the steel came, uh, what I could say was probably the... Uh, middle of February, is that, February that about, 14th, I that about right? And uh, uh, Constructs is here as uh, one of the subs and they've been erecting the steel starting with the, the child care wing and uh, we've had a lot of progress made. And you were talking earlier, you have, you're hoping to have more steel in next week? Yes, um, we have the steel coming in three phases. Um, the second phase is actually the, uh, the pool building which is down on the, the east end there and uh, um, that will uh, come together pretty quickly just like uh, the first phase did and then the final phase will be the gymnasium which is the fastest phase of all because it's the simplest building it's pretty much a pure rectangle with a lot of without the juts and angles that that these buildings have yeah, because in the, in the first segment which the, the viewers have already seen that was the pool we were doing the pool and you're explaining how we, the energy efficiency and <clears throat> be able to use it for um, I would call it gymnastics and rehabilitation for some of the, the elderly. Right. The rehab. Therapy. Mm -hmm. The therapy, therapy. Yes. correct, yes. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, so this is going to be the day, basically the daycare. Yeah, this is uh, child care, um, which is on the first floor, and uh, which is the child care lobby, um, also on the, on the first floor. And on the second floor, um, to the far west there, we have the uh, two of the fitness studios. We have two studios that are about a thousand square feet each. And uh, in the center there, we have uh, uh, two convertible squash and racquetball courts uh, that are going in as well. And then upstairs uh, above the uh, uh, child care lobby, which is also this, this more kind of rectangular shaped building that's coming off the uh, the gable end of the, uh, the child care wing, we have uh, uh, youth fitness in, in that section and a, a couple of offices as well. So uh, um, it, it's, you're starting to see <laughs> things take shape and actually when you walk around and get closer, you can actually see some of the different rooms that you know, we've been looking at these plants for a long time. But, <clears throat> you're still, um, because of the bad weather and everything, how is the August, is it going to be tight, the August completion for this, or you still think you're going to make it? 
it, it's a balancing act, and uh, you know, steel took a little longer to get here than we thought, but uh, other things progressed much more rapidly than we thought. The site work and the foundations and under slab piping is way ahead. Uh, both pools are already poured with gunite. Um, the tenting that uh, we'll look at a little bit later over there on the far west side is the jacuzzi. They're getting ready uh, to pour that as well. Um, right here, kind of to the uh, uh, north um, east, is a uh, gymnastics pit that also is being poured. That's about a six foot deep pit. That's about 13 by 20. That's used, filled with foam balls that um, just gymnastics will use for, uh, for training and we will also use as uh, to attract additional programs to the Y, such as snowboarders and um, kids who want to have birthday parties in it. So that, that so you had said that earlier, was an addition. Oh, excuse me, but you had said earlier that that was a change order, so that's a new improvement on to your original plans? Yes, that was something we went back and the Y did a lot of research in uh, what's going on with gymnastics now throughout the country and it, um, to have a full-fledged gymnastics program, a pit is a major attraction, and not only for gymnastics, but other uh, avenues as well, uh, people practicing jumping and uh, flips. Well, and <laughs> <laughs> so that could possibly open it up for, for example, more and more high schools are having gymnastics programs, but they don't have the gymnastics facilities. That's correct. The uh, closest one, there is a pit in Brattleboro and a private gymnastics facility, and then the other the, the next nearest pit is in uh, Greenfield, Mass. Um, I think Goffstown, New Hampshire has one as well. So, so, so if Keene wants to do gymnastics, they're really kind of out of luck unless they travel to Brattleboro every day. If, if you want to if excel want. beyond the basic <laughs> skills, yeah. right, it, there's a, it comes to an end. There, so. so can we go take a look at your new gymnastic pit? Sure. Boy, when you, you're driving by it, the building doesn't look that big. But as you can see, as we get closer and closer, it looks pretty immense. What's the square footage on just this section? Well, just the section that was built. Just child care is probably about 25,000 square feet out of the 63 overall for the so, building. So that's equivalent to about 10 to 12 regular size houses nowadays. <laughs> yeah. So when you put it in that perspective, it's pretty big. It's a lot of steel. It's, it's a lot of steel. Then when you look at what you have right now, it's, it's immense because you really don't have great facilities. You have great personnel and the kids love it, but you really don't have good current facilities. I think we've got, what, 31,000 31, square feet of usable space at the current Y. We'll have 63,000 here. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, and it's a pretty efficient building. There's not much in this building, aside from a couple of mechanical rooms and two stairwells that is not usable pro programmatic space. So, we're okay. so now this is um, the gymnastic pit? This is the pit, and uh, they, uh, uh, they, they're pouring concrete despite the frost being in the ground. All these uh, uh, black tarps are actually uh, blankets that they pump yep. the glycol mix through that keeps the ground from freezing and the, um, they're getting ready uh, to pour it there. Uh, from all the rain there was a little bit of water down in here but they're pumping the water out and I got, must say overall the site has performed very well uh, throughout the winter. Um, there was always a concern about water here. We brought the, the grade up about um, a foot and then we have uh, a retention pond over there. Um, that's uh, handled the water very well. So. Yeah, because like Liz was saying earlier, that was one of the really big concerns. What's the runoff going to be? But when you look at the amount of snow, the amount of rain in the last two days, there is no flooding over here. You've got, you even have dry spots. You have ice, but you have dry spots. So the design was a very good design. And yeah, it's I, worked out very, we're very happy. Yeah, so no flooding. And that's good because it was in 2005 when we had the flood, when my house got flooded. This place was all flooded. They had, it was right. a duck pond for quite a while. Mm -hmm. So you guys fixed it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so we were talking, that's the elevator shaft? I think that's the elevator pit. Yeah, that's about the right spot for it. And uh, um, that's at the end of the gymnasium. That's, yeah, that's definitely the elevator pit there. And uh, they're... Uh, um, you can see the tenting further to the west for the uh, 
further to the east yep. for the uh, jacuzzi. They're getting ready to spray gunite in that. Mm -hmm. And uh, things are moving along very well. And so like we said before, it's going to be handicap accessible to everybody. And absolutely. One of the major flaws with our existing building is that, as you know, we have four levels, 11 stairwells, no elevator. It's really impossible for anyone with limited physical ability to get around. And this whole floor plan will be much more conducive to limited mobility persons. Uh, but then the elevator will help those in wheelchairs or on crutches get up to the second floor. So it'll be great. And it isn't just wheelchair and crutches. There's a lot of us right. as we get in our 50s and 60s. Right. The, knees the knees aren't quite working. The mm -hmm. knees are the backs. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, so right. they'll be able to help. Absolutely. Because I think an, under the current conditions, a, a lot of the people, middle age or higher, are just not going right. to climb up those stairs yeah. just yeah. To, to use the facilities. I think the, the percentage of our members who are seniors, uh, I think <coughs> maybe six or seven percent, we really have not captured that population in our current facility because it just is not inviting and welcoming at all for them. There's no access to the building yeah. for them. There's no it. access. And the other part is when you talk about access, parking. Yes. You're going to have so much better parking. Right. Our seniors, seniors can come in, go to your facilities. The way it is right now with the Well Street parking lot, they're basically all rented out. There's right. really no place for seniors to park. Yeah. It's very yeah. difficult. This will be great. Okay. And so we'll wrap up this segment. Okay. Okay. We'll probably be back in a couple of more weeks, see as we're going. And so I think in the end, by the total we may have six seven maybe even eight different segments so we can keep the people up to snuff and oh yeah one little thing the flyer that went out this weekend uh -huh. you're fundraising we're, we're still fundraising um, Chris is referring to a letter that members at the yep. Y have been yep. receiving um, we've got just under two million dollars to go we've raised a little over 10.2 and we are gearing up for you know, the very final phase of fundraising. We're looking for another, as I said, almost two million. And we're really hoping that we can have broad community support on this project. This is a building that will serve our community, community for, you know, hopefully another 125 years. And we want everyone to be a part of it. Five, 10, 20 bucks, they're all welcome. Everyone's welcome. We'll, we'll take some larger donations as well, but yeah. everyone's welcome. Absolutely. And one final one, the time change is coming. The yeah. weather is getting better. We may have a few nasty storms left, but you really expect to be able to pick up in the next couple of weeks going forward. We're right on schedule. This, the child care is going to open at the end of August in uh, 2011, this, this August, and then the Y will follow a month later. And uh, there, there's no uh, red flags that we can make that date. So, yeah, it doesn't seem like much other than some steel, but the hardest part of this job is already done, which is the foundation Foundations. and design. And, and uh, McMillan's done a fantastic job. We are way ahead on all submittals, and you know we're looking at the little tiny detail things that are the fit and finishes of this building right now. We're down to picking computers and furniture and chairs and lobby. So you know we're we're ahead on the time plan. So we're, we're no happy case. about that. So I'll see you both in a couple of weeks Sounds and hope great. the weather's the same like today, Absolutely. maybe 20, 30 degrees warmer. Thank Thanks, you. Chris. Okay. Sure, actually, we're standing right in the lobby of child care. It's going to look a little bit different once it's finished, but um, immediately around us, you can see a lot of like age metal uh, studs that are going to be used for the partitions. Um, and they've actually, there's been a lot of progress here. The slab is poured, uh, the roof is complete on the child care wing and they've actually started uh, the partition so that they can go forward with the electrical and the plumbing in this section uh, which is going to be the first section of the Y uh, to open. Uh, we still are on target for a uh, early September opening in time with the school year for child care and uh, even though you don't see a lot of people around us now it could change in a couple hours and there people could be uh, um, making a lot of noise in our, in our way here so um, yeah because once you get the frame up everything can go quite quickly inside that's right you rule out weather as being a factor and it was uh, definitely a tough winter that yeah. we had uh, we're trying to forget about it and <laughs> have spring come but mcmillan made good progress some things got way ahead of schedule and other things fell behind but uh, we still feel confident that we can achieve our opening date for child care and that's uh, uh, and then as we go along the area 
most of the roofing is coming on, so that will make it a heck of a lot easier if you get a rainy spring. Right, weather be doesn't become a factor anymore. It's probably as soon as it becomes nice, weather isn't a factor. It's uh, probably the inverse of the way we we'd want it to happen, but uh, um, they won't lose time due to rain. Which will be. Want to show us some other places? Sure. Um, you can actually, if uh, you want to uh, do child care first, and then we'll... We can uh, do the child care first. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you want to come, to, these are going to, this is actually the lobby going into child care, and to my left um, are all the different rooms that make up uh, preschool, toddler, um, as well as a multi-purpose um, aftercare room, and they've started to divide these out, and we are, uh, I know we've been repeating this a lot, <laughs> but we are adding 33 additional slots in child care that will bring us up in, in the mid-80s. Um, once the rooms are actually sheetrocked, the state of New Hampshire comes in and measures every square inch and they have a formula for how many um, children can be in the space. So if you, if you move a wall six <laughs> inches, that could be losing half a child, if, if there is such thing as half, <laughs> half a child. But, uh, and multi-purpose uh, aftercare, we're going to be adding another uh, 33 slots at this location as well as um, the two other locations that we're running for aftercare. Those are going to, to remain in place. So it's going to be quite a contribution to the community in terms of expanding um, care for both kids preschool and um, after school care for children. So um, Ch Quality child care spots are always at a premium. But on the other side is how many jobs you're going to be creating as a result of the expanding job care? The, um, I think the statistic is about 25 full-time equivalents will be created by the uh, by the Y, and that's kind of in, we're kind of work the details out now on that exactly in terms of certain positions we're trying to figure out. Is it worth outsourcing certain things like a full-time maintenance person for the Y? That might be uh, handled better by an independent contractor that's just doing it on a, on a part-time basis. So uh, uh, we're in the midst of trying to get the operational side of this fine-tuned, uh, as well as trying to get the building up at the same time, it's, 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 it's a juggling act. Juggling act, right? Yeah. Okay, next. Next is, um, you can't see to the, uh, to the right here is gonna be uh, the area that's gonna be um, Child Watch, which is uh, uh, part of the other wing. This child care here is a standalone, separate, almost you could look at it as a separate business. And from a security point of view, it has its own entrance, and people from the Y using the Y cannot get into child care. Um, there are actually going to be card swipes on the doors, and there will be a receptionist in child care. So the, the child watch, though, is a, a program as part of the Y. Parents bring their children to the Y uh, who are too young to utilize programs. Uh, parents wanting to work out, have a place to drop a child uh, for an hour or two while they're getting uh, a workout in or attending a, a program. So, and that will actually feed into the gym, which is uh, to your right there. And then above us is the second level, which is not part of child care. Um, there are two studios that are up there, as well as two convertible squash and racquetball courts, and a youth fitness area as well. Um, what else is up there? A uh, teen center, which is pretty much just a, not a place, where, a room where they're going to be hanging out all the time. It's where they check in before going out and participating in programming in the Y. They're not just here to play, uh, you know, foosball or, you know, hang out in a room. We want them active. So it's just, it's just pretty much a place to sign in and drop your coat and go out for the rest of the Y. And the whole upper level is accessible to the rest of the Y. And you cannot get down into this level unless you pass a security point to get into uh, child care. And the actual door frame, I think, is right about here, uh, which would be considered part of the rest of the Y. Um, there is access to a stairwell, which kind of goes off actually to the left, right? Uh, so left. You're going to replace right. the ladder, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, the ladder will be gone. There will actually be a stairwell there that will have access to the upper levels, as well as through the uh, hanging. People can actually get from the upper side of the lobby by going across the walking running track as well. Last time we were here, you were talking something about a gymnastics pit. What, what's this hole in the ground now? This is a, uh, it's about a 13 by 22 foot pit that's going to be about six feet deep that's filled with foam. 
and there's a, a runway that's going to be depressed as well. Um, with it, we'll have a spring uh, floor in it, and it allows not only gymnasts but anyone who's doing any kind of aerial maneuver to practice before uh, doing the real thing. I mean, you can have anything from mountain bikers to uh, people who who are snowboarders uh, doing flips, or just for fun. You could, you know, it will be used not only for the gymnastics program, but uh, as it will be used for uh, parties and rentals and anyone wanting to uh, jump into a, a foam pit. <laughs> and we had talked about before, quality gymnastic training facilities are, are pretty limited around this area. The um, closest pit is in Brattleboro right now. It's a, a part of a private um, gymnastics school. So this will be uh, unique to the Keene region. And uh, we looked at other programs at different Ys within the area and, it, and it's a big draw. It will really allow us for the first time to have a, a, a full-fledged gymnastics program. Yeah, because I've got a, a grandson who's seven and my granddaughter is going to be seven and they both want to go in gym, into gymnastics. But it's expensive. It's kind of like karate. It's expensive. This would give the parents an opportunity to see if their kids are really interested in this without spending all that money up front. Yeah, the Y offers great programming for gymnastics. Yeah. Um, you know, my daughter, when she was little, you know, it, it seems like a rite of passage. <laughs> Whether they become gymnasts or not, they uh, they all they uh, try it for a while. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. So, uh, the other area that you can start to see here is um, they've started to hang the suspended uh, walking running track, and uh, you can get a sense of you know that they haven't completed the portion against childcare yeah. there, but. Um, you can get a sense of the, uh, the scope of that, and we figured it's going to be about 12 laps around for a mile. I don't know if anyone remembers the track that's down in the basement <laughs> of the Y, but I think that was about 32 laps around or a mile in, the, in a very uh, a space with a very low ceiling and usually pretty hot because the boilers are right next to it. Um, but you'll, we have a big, nice, open expanse here that you'll see it. You know, when it's January and there's two feet of snow on the ground, it's 15 below zero, no excuse to stay at home. You can come here and exercise. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately there aren't a lot of places to walk indoors in, in this area or, or run indoors. And uh, uh, we, when we did the uh, membership surveys and the needs assessments, we had a lot of people saying there's no mall, there's nowhere I can walk, I just need a place in the winter to, to go and be able to yeah, the, get the, some motion. The place that gets the most demand is the Keene Rec Center. And then again, that's really, really small too. Bob, it's so bright in here right now. <laughs> Obviously, the walls aren't up, the roof isn't finished. But what is the window situation going to be in the gym? Because I know that members over and over have said, I want natural light, I want it to be bright. So what is this going to be like when it's finished? Uh, the gym has high windows that are above the track that run in a thin band around. Um, one of the, the things that we had to juggle in, in the cost of the facility um, was insulation versus lighting versus the amount of glass here. Um, at one point we did have skylights in a design. Those had to come out for budgetary reasons. But um, compared to the gym that we have now, which has almost no, no light, light. <laughs> we will have natural light on two long sides and high up. The other issue is, is glare. You can't have a gym that has uh, full windows in it because you don't want someone getting the, the sun in their eyes when they're trying to take a basketball shot or, or in gymnastics at all. So it'll be a nice open space and there will be um, a fair amount of natural lighting in here. But the well. glare would be an ultimate home court advantage as long as you pick the right side. <laughs> it, it, it could be. <laughs> and so as we, we have talked a number of times about the footprint of it. And you can give a big number, but the number doesn't really mean anything until actually what you see what's now. This gym, this is the gym area, correct? That's correct. Right. So half of it will be gymnastics. There will be a retractable, like heavy duty vinyl curtain. curtain. Okay. Um, the other half will be a full court basketball too. But this entire space, you know, when open, is significant. What are the dimensions? Um, I didn't bring my little cheat sheet with me, but I, I, I had a, yeah. I mean, the whole facility is a 43,000 square foot footprint. So, and I think there's 43, about 40, 63, 63 overall, oh, okay. 40, oh, footprint. 43 yes. footprint. Yes, yes. And I think the gym is about 22,000 square feet. This is actually the biggest 
span of, of, of the whole, but I'll check that number exactly. I because when I, when I look at the basketball court you have right now, then you look at the gymnastic area that you have, and then you use at the weight area, this looks bigger than all three of them combined at the old facility. And plus they're all in the same place instead of having to go all around the building. Well, I think we may have mentioned this um, in previous slides, mm. but the current facility has 31,000 square feet of usable mm. space, programmable space, <laughs> and this will have 63,000. So, so more than double. It's a significant jump. Okay. You, you know, you get a sense of what, half of this is going to be the basketball court. And when you start to add in the area under the track, and what normal setbacks are yep. off the court, um, it really picks up a lot of space there. So even with a curtain drawn across there, we're much larger than a, our standard basketball court that we have right now. So, um, and we can't talk about the Y without the swimming pool, swimming facilities. So we can go down there and take a look at the swimming pool? We can. Okay. So we're at the far end of the building. That's going to be the lobby over there? Yeah, the center knuckle is, is the lobby and part of the wellness center above it. Um, and you can see to, the, uh, to your right uh, the elevator shaft. That's already uh, the block that they've started working on for that. Um, and if, when we get a little closer to it, you can actually see where the cathedral will go up be between that. Uh, the climbing wall will make up the left side uh, of the lobby. And uh, the entrance is... Uh, is towards the back there, the main entrance to the lobby. And like you said before, repeating us, ADA compliant completely. Absolutely. So almost anybody can come and use this facility. That is, that is correct. Okay, right behind us, what do we have? Right behind us we have um, what's actually uh, the mechanical room, which is part of the pool. Um, you can see all the piping that is uh, in place, as well as some of the, the surge tanks and uh, the, the pool filtration equipment that they're starting to work on there. And, and further to your left, uh, you have the main body of the pool, uh, which this is our six lane, 25 uh, yard pool. Um, you'll notice the steel when we get into the, the pool wing is a different color. That's because it uh, is galvanized and it has a special uh, tenemic primer that's put on top of it. Protected from uh, all the corrosion? Yes, uh, the pool areas are notoriously ones for uh, uh, showing distress after a couple of years if they're not designed correctly. Uh, we went to a lot of pains to making sure we had the right design, not only for the material, but for the air filtration system that goes along with it. Um, and, and it has to be really tight. It's almost like when you're building a super insulated house. You can't have any breaks in the barrier or uh, uh, penetration. So it's going to be under very close scrutiny when that goes together because um, what we don't want to see are, is, you know, three years down the line, rusty lockers, uh, all the things that, that in that environment uh, are, are tough. Uh, the other thing that I should note is that depending on fundraising, we are considering trying to put in a UV filtration system for the pool. Um, that UV would, is ultraviolet? Ultraviolet. Um, that would cut the amount of chlorine um, down by almost 50%. Um, there are a lot of people that because of sensitivities such as asthma or skin conditions, cannot swim in a conventionally chlorinated pool. So we're really hoping that uh, this is something that we can get through and we can pull the trigger on that right up to the end. And we are uh, in the active stage of uh, the capital campaign stu is still the community phase and um, we really need donations to, to enable us to be able to complete some of these things that are on our, our wish list. I don't know, my oldest daughter is blonde, and she says that she doesn't want the green hair from the chlorine from the pool. So. <laughs> <laughs> and you were talking about the rusty lockers. One of the biggest complaints people have now is the locker room. Where, where is the locker room going to be? The locker room bank is uh, actually right uh, behind where the mechanical room is. You have men's, then women's, and then family. Uh, working the way down there. And the only access to the pool is through the locker room. So there will not be people in street shoes <laughs> All over walking around in the pool. And it also we can help control the pool environment. You, everyone needs to shower before they go in, into the pool as well. And uh, above the pool, um, and actually where he's working right now, is the main part of our, our wellness center. Um, that's where the most square footage is. We have about 5,500 
square feet of wellness that's broken up between the above the lobby and above uh, the locker rooms there. And that's where all the cardiovascular equipment will be. Um, there's a view out into the pool uh, over a, a spectator seating area that um, so people who are watching children either in swimming lessons or at swim meets can actually uh, hang out and have a seat and not be stuck on the pool deck um, in, in that environment. Yeah, because so. I was trying to think, where's your spectator bench in the pool you have right now? There is there, there are a couple of chairs, you know, if you want, <laughs> want to sit in a plastic chair and watch it, you, you can do that. And so we'll head down this direction, maybe we'll get some better shots of the swimming pool, and then we'll give some people some long view of the actual construction site and how big and massive this building is coming along. Great. Right. Okay. So two things before we wrap up for today. You got a jacuzzi and a therapy pool? Yeah, the jacuzzi was poured in the middle of the winter, believe it or not. There was all this plastic tent tenting over and this is uh, the real thing. It's a built-in jacuzzi. The water's filtered through the pool system and real steps uh, going down into it, not the portable uh, version that we have at the current Y, um, as well as the therapy pool that you can see immediately behind us with the uh, wheelchair the ramp entry. You can actually roll a wheelchair right into the pool. Uh, this will be used for not only for therapy but for aqua size classes um, as well. So uh, um, a, a nice addition to have two different temperature pools as well. The swimming pool, as you know, is always at a lower temperature. The lap swimmers like it that way; they get too hot. And obviously the therapy pool is at um, a higher temperature up in the 80s. And then you have the jacuzzi, which is up uh, somewhere around 104, 105 degrees for uh, uh, a true jacuzzi experience. But one of the other benefits of just not therapy is you don't have to close the other pool during therapy classes or any of the jet swimmer size classes. Or, you know, infant, toddler <laughs> swim classes could be here while you have lap swimming in the big pool. So it'll offer us yeah. many more options programming would be great. And um, <clears throat> we were talking a little bit as we were setting up the camera, just the view out here. It, it, it's calm, it, it's green, it's relaxing. You don't hear all the cars, well you got the construction but they're going to go in. But it's just a nice place to, to be out here. Even if the Y wasn't out here, you wouldn't mind walking your dog or just coming out for a walk here. You guys picked a really nice place to, to build the Y. It's a great spot, and we've actually had conversations about really taking advantage of where we are, um, especially in the winter. I can envision having you know snowshoers mm. or cross-country skiers go right up to nope. that trail and then come back and sit in the jacuzzi. And, um, you know, lots of space for the kids to be outside playing while they're in childcare. Mm. It's, it's really going to be a wonderful mm. um, spot for all of us. So best, the Y will not be restricted to the inside um, boundaries of the Y. There's other things that you'll be able to do with this new facility. Right. Well, technically, our land is where we, we are. are. So um, you know, we're, we're not going to okay. have a big soccer yeah. field out here, at least in the immediate future. But you know, just mm. being near all this <clears throat> land will give us some opportunities, which would be great. We chewed up most of the 10.1 <laughs> acres with this facility and controlling the water on the facility. The retention pond took up uh, more space than we would have liked to have seen. But um, there is a play area that's off of child care uh, on, the, on the west side of the building. Um, there's a patio actually that's going to be off of the lobby uh, where people can sit outside. And there are some accessory buildings that you don't see. There's a small shed that houses things like lawn mowers that will be tastefully done. And uh, a couple of transformers that, you know, utility functions of the Y that you'll see. Um, we were sensitive about the views going down Summit Road. We've decided that we're going to bury all the propane tanks so it won't look like a farm of, of cylinders. There are between seven and, and ten large propane tanks that are going to be out there so that we will just see the tops of those. So uh, it, we want it to look, the building to look nice on, on all sides. I want to thank you guys for inviting me out here. Construction is going really well. For the viewers, we're going to we will have three, the last three edi edifications of your construction, and hopefully you'll invite, invite me out more as it goes farther and long as we start going inside. And again, as you said, you're still fundraising. Every penny counts, yeah. and people who donate, they know their money is going to go someplace worthwhile. 
this is going to be a welcome addition to Keene. This is something that Keene can be proud of. So I want to thank you and the members oh, nice of the Y who are really going out there, helping the, um, the quality of our community. Well, thank you, Chris. And so, again, thank you for being with us. We'll see you on the long road. And if you don't want to make the long road, come down to the Y.